the architecture we've built is now in a great place. We've got a way forward when we want to add new services, and we've got a way forward if we want to scale things up further. And so what we're going to do now is look to make the most of what we've got and make a better experience for our users. Now on this topic, there's a ton of things that can be done. And we're going to talk about some more of them later, but our focus in this one's going to be on the power of using things like AWS's Simple Storage Service, also known as S3, and their CloudFront Content Delivery Network. In a nutshell, S3 is where you can store static files and control permissions and access to them. CloudFront, well, we'll get more into that soon. But why use these services? And for what reason? And I don't just mean, you know, using an S3 bucket. And by the way, a bucket is just what, it's a concept in S3. When you want to upload things to S3, you make a bucket and you put things in the bucket. <laughs> but when I say why use these, I don't mean like the, the layperson's way of using it, which is typically is a, like a side Dropbox. I mean, how, why do we use this in context of a real architecture? Well, first up, we're going to assume that our applications that we've launched have some sort of web aspect to them, and that's been our scenario. Because of that, they probably all have static files like images, CSS, and JavaScript. Well, right now in our architecture, we're serving them all directly from our application, which means they're coming from the containers, which means they're using up resources on our host. Since those things don't change a lot, well, it's a massive waste of our resources to serve them every single time. You know, you may have, you know, logos or background images that just don't change. And well, if they don't change a lot, it's just kind of a waste to have them all over the place. Furthermore, file access and delivery can really bog your application down depending upon how much your application has to serve those files. And also, if our application includes every single static file that it needs to serve, well, if that's the case, that means every container is going to have all of those assets. And that means if you have 10 of those containers and they're all the same and they all have 10 copies of those assets, well, there's going to be a lot less space on our instance for more containers. So a very simple performance boost here is to pull all of those static files out of our application, and so our containers, and instead serve them over something like S3. Now, when users go to interact with our application, they'll grab all of the static files from S3, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the like. And if that's the case, well, that means that our application on our servers, you know, it doesn't have to worry about sending those anymore. It doesn't have to worry about computing them anymore. If they don't have to worry about that, well, that frees up all sorts of resources and compute, which means we can get even more out of our EC2 instances now. Okay, so that's pretty simple. But if you've done anything with S3, then you know that buckets are locked to a particular region. And you can think of regions just as separate data centers that you can launch your infrastructure in. What you launch in one of them does not affect or carry over to other regions. Okay, so maybe your S3 bucket, you know, that you've created for your application is located in North Virginia. Well, if your users are coming from the United Kingdom, <laughs> they've, got, they've got quite the journey to take just to get your static files. And so this is where a content delivery network comes into play. A content delivery network is going to take what's in your bucket and make it available to other locations around the world. So in this normal case, you know, you've got it just locked in North Virginia, but by sending it over a content delivery network, well, it'll be available all over the place. So let's just, for a quick example here, if we'll, let's just say that we've got our, our bucket here in, in North Virginia, and then we've got our user here in the United Kingdom. So when someone goes to grab something from your bucket, instead of traveling all the way to your S3 bucket in North Virginia, they'll instead just go to the nearest edge location nearest to them. If the edge location they've gone to hasn't yet copied files from the original S3 bucket itself, well, it'll go do that and it'll cache them. Otherwise, if it's already got the cache, it'll just hand the files over. Because the edge location is closer, it'll be far faster for the user. Now, we do all of this in AWS using AWS CloudFront. And as you can see, there are a ton of these edge locations, so caches, all over the world. By using CloudFront, we make sure that the majority of users will have a place that they can quickly pull static files from. 
Now, to get this working, you know, all we do is we tell CloudFront about our S3 bucket, and then it'll make those files available to all of the different locations. And so now if your users in the United Kingdom want to get files and images from your S3 bucket, well, they don't have to go all the way back to wherever it is that you've got your bucket. They'll just go to the nearest location uh, closest to them. And look, I know you're wondering, oh, well, how do we set that up? Well, when working with S3, normally you just upload files and then you point to the URL of the file and that's it. Well, with CloudFront, there's actually just only one extra step. And that's just telling CloudFront about your S3 bucket and of course all the little configuration settings. And then they will give you a new URL, a CloudFront URL, and you'll just use that in your applications instead of the regular S3 one. Okay, and so with that, our architecture is now growing in sophistication. Now when users come to our applications, they'll wind up getting their static files from CloudFront and the data from our actual applications in our containers on our EC2 instances. This is going to free up a lot of power in those instances so that we can make even better use of them. And since the static files will be coming from locations closer to the user, well, their experience is going to be improved as well. But as you can guess, because this has come a long way, how do we keep track of what's going on in our applications, you know, in all of the containers we've created? And what about on the servers? What if errors start happening? How do we track those? Well, we'll address that next with centralized monitoring and logging.